Hello everybody, my name is Stacia Diles and I am an English teacher at Murphy High School. I'm really excited to be here with y'all today and I want to help y'all get some concepts so that you can understand how to better fulfill your packet that you're doing at home. The first concept that we want to talk about is theme. Now I know that you're being asked to talk about theme and your stories and your packet, so I kind of want to go back to the basics and make sure everybody's comfortable with this standard. So what is theme? Theme is basically the search for meaning. We're going to be unpacking this standard today, which is RL 10.2. <clears throat> it is to determine a theme or a central idea of a text and to analyze in detail its development over the course of the text, including how it emerges and how it is shaped and refined by specific details. So what is theme? Well, in order for you to understand this, you need to go ahead and get out some paper and a pencil so that you can jot down a few notes. So I'll give you a few minutes to get yourself prepared. Hopefully you're ready now. Let's go ahead and start with the basic definition of theme. So theme is basically, it's a life lesson. It's a meaning, a moral, or a, a message about life or human nature that is communicated by a literary work. Well, that sounds like a mouthful. So there's a little bit of a simpler definition here. We can say that theme is, in other words, what the story teaches the reader. And that's what we're really going to focus on through the next couple of passages. What is the story teaching you as the reader? So I want to give you a second to make sure that you have jotted down this definition because you are going to need it over the next couple of lessons. And you can go ahead and put it into these words also if that helps you comprehend this definition better. Okay, hopefully if everyone has written that down. I know I talk a lot faster than you write, so I try to slow down. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about how we identify a theme. Okay, well a theme, it's never going to be one word. It is always going to be a sentence or a phrase. And I tell the kids in my class that if you're taking a standardized test and it has multiple options on theme, and one of the options is one word, that's not it. It's never going to be one word. It will always be a sentence or a phrase. And you don't even have to agree with the theme in order to identify it. Let's look at a couple examples of well-known themes. One is that money can't buy happiness. The other is that you don't judge people based on the surface. Some people also say don't judge a book by its cover. It's the same concept, just different wording. And another example is that it is better to die free than live under tyranny. I want you to go ahead and make sure that you have copied this section down into your notes that you're taking. That theme will never be one word. It is always going to be a sentence or a phrase. I would also like you to write down one of these examples on a type of theme that is related in most general texts. Okay, so what is the theme? Let's go ahead and read a passage and figure out how to identify the moral or the lesson that we learn from this story. Go ahead and read along as I read to you. Jenny Pushover was so excited. She had a pack of Starbursts in her lunch and she had been looking forward to eating them all morning. Lunch finally came and Jenny sat down to eat her Starburst when her friend, Yudi, sat next to her. Let me get the pink ones, asked Yudi. Jenny liked the pink ones best, but she thought that Yudi was funny, and Jenny wanted Yudi to like her. So Jenny gave Yudi all of her pink starbursts. Before Jenny was done giving Yudi the pink ones, Carrie sat on the other side of Jenny. Let me get the red and orange ones, Jenny. Remember when I gave you that Snickers? Jenny did not remember that, though she did remember when Carrie ate a whole Snickers in front of her. But Jenny thought that Carrie was so cool, so she gave her the red and orange starbursts. Now that she only had the yellow ones, Jenny wasn't so excited about eating starbursts anymore. Now that we have read this text, I want you to think about what Jenny Pushover could have learned from this situation. What moral or lesson can we take away from this scenario? 
So as you're taking notes, I'm going to give you a few moments to write down the possible themes. Now remember, it's never one word. It's always going to be a sentence or a phrase. Hopefully I've given you enough time to write down what you think the theme could be. Let's go ahead and talk about some possible answers. And I don't want you to get discouraged if your answer is not word for word. Theme is very loose and we all interpret things different as readers. One possible answer could be that you can't buy friends. You know, during this scenario, she's trying to buy friends through giving them her candy. Another example of the theme could be that you have to take care of yourself. Even though her friends want all her starburst, she's been looking forward to them, and now she has none left that she even likes. Another option could be that not everyone is your friend. Let's dig a little deeper. How do we know what those themes are? Well, we have to go back into the text and look for evidence. So look here. The evidence is highlighted in red. Jenny Pushover was so excited. Now I want you to note too here that the author, she's kind of, or he's kind of used a play on words here. The character's name is Jenny Pushover. Now even though it's not spelled correctly as a pushover, we know that the author is trying to give us a clue about Jenny's personality. She doesn't really know how to stand up for herself. That continues with the evidence right here that says, let me get the pink ones, asked Judy. Jenny liked the pink ones best, but she thought that Yudi was funny, and Jenny wanted Yudi to like her. So Jenny gave Yudi all of her pink starburst. This relates back to what theme? The theme that she is trying to buy her friendship. You can't buy people's friendship. It also relates to the other theme that Yudi, if she was truly her friend, would she have asked her for all of her pink starbursts or maybe one? True friends don't take everything that you have and leave you with nothing. Let's look further in the text. There's another piece of evidence to support this. Carrie sat on the other side of Jenny. Let me get the red and orange ones, Jenny. Remember when I gave you that Snickers? Jenny didn't remember that. But Jenny thought that Carrie was so cool, so she gave her the red and orange starburst. Again, our character, Jenny Pushover, is trying to now buy Carrie's friendship by allowing her to take all the red and the orange ones. Carrie is not turning out to be the best friend either. So again, we're learning that theme that not everyone is your friend. Let's relate back to the last sentence here. It says, now that she only had the yellow ones, Jenny wasn't so excited about eating Starburst anymore. Now, I bolded this for a reason. If we look back to the very first sentence, it talks about how she was so excited in the beginning because she had these pack of Starbursts that she had been looking forward to. At the end, she's no longer excited because she did not stick up for herself. She did not voice or express her opinion about wanting to keep some of her Starburst. Therefore, she's missed out. Hopefully y'all can see how the themes developed in that story and you're going to be able to apply this to your packets as you analyze the poetry for week one. Let's talk a little bit more about how we can identify the themes. First of all, and I want you to write these in your notes, themes are not explicit. What that means is they are not going to be clearly stated. The story is never going to tell you the theme of the story is. It doesn't work like that. Instead, themes are implied. What that means is that you have to infer. You read the text and you make an inference on what you think the theme could possibly be. You have to figure it out for yourself. Themes are also bigger than the story. You don't need to focus on the small world of the story, but yet you need to understand that this small world story it's going to relate to the big world of theme, and it applies to the real world. Themes are about the big picture. They're not about the fact that yellow starburst tastes bad, or that Yudi and Carrie are bad friends. You need to think bigger. Think how it can relate to real world advice. So as we go over the next couple of slides, 
we're going to do a little review. The first review, and I want you to jot these down on your notes, is that theme is what we can learn from a story, the moral or lesson it teaches us. The second is that themes must be inferred. They're never going to be clearly stated. You have to read the text and you have to make an inference. And the other point is that themes are about the big world. They're going to relate to a real world theme that could apply in many situations. All right, now that you're ready and you've got your notes, let's try a little bit of practice. We're going to read each story. I want you to write what you think the theme is. And then we're going to locate evidence in the story that leads us to believe this theme. As you're doing this, I want you to think about how does the small world of the story connect to the big world theme? How could we apply this to other situations in life? Are you ready? Here's our first practice. Mike, could you please fix the, link in the leak in the roof? Katie asked her husband politely. But he was sick of what felt like his wife nagging him. I'll get to it when I get to it, he replied brusquely. A small drip drop of water collected in a cooking pot on the living room floor. The next time it rained, Katie had to use a large bucket. The leak was growing in size. Mike, I really need you to fix the patch, to patch the roof. It's getting worse. Katie warned her husband, but again, he was in no mood to take direction. Do I really need to keep saying this, Katie? I'm tired from working. I want to watch the game. I will patch the leak later. But Mike did not patch the leak, and it continued expanding. A few weeks later, a torrential rainstorm hit. The water poured through the roof, and some of it may have damaged the floor. But Mike didn't even seem to notice until the rains fell on his widescreen television. Now, I want you to think about this theme. What is a real world connection we could make to this? What could we carry on as a possible lesson learned? As you're writing your notes, I want you to give a possible theme that you could take from this story. And I'm going to give you a few moments to think about it. Okay, hopefully I've given you enough time to jot something down. Again, don't get discouraged if your themes don't line up word for word. They're all interpreted a little bit differently. One possible theme could be don't wait for things to get out of control before you address it. If he would have listened about the complaints in the beginning, he wouldn't have had the issue he had towards the end. Another theme could be do not procrastinate. Notice that these kind of have similarities. Waiting too long and procrastinating, it's basically the same thing. He procrastinated. Sometimes when you procrastinate, you put things off to the last minute and it can be too late. Another option could be make wise priorities. Now our character here, he is prioritized with other things than fixing his roof. He's more concerned with watching a game and television than he is about fixing the roof above his family's head. Well, we didn't just guess these themes. We didn't just take them out of nowhere. There was evidence in the text that led us to believe this. So let's analyze this evidence. Look in the beginning here. And I actually want to take a step back. Katie, right here, asks her husband politely. I want you to note that the author is including a little bit of characterization here. He's showing us that Katie is not really a nag. She's really just a concerned wife who needs her roof fixed. However, Mark, he, I'm sorry, Mike, he was sick of what it felt like his wife nagging him. I'll get to it when I get to it, he, rep he replied brusquely. Now, this term brusquely means that he's not speaking nicely to her. He is acting irritated and frustrated, even though she asked him politely. The evidence continues that he says, I'll get to it when I get to it. This shows he is procrastinating. 
a small drip drop of water collected in a cooking pot on the living room floor. The next time it rained, Katie had to use a large bucket. The leak was growing in size. It's getting worse, Katie warned her husband. Again, he was in no mood to take direction. This evidence directly leads us to the theme that Mike was not handling his priorities in a timely manner. He waited until things got too bad where they couldn't even be fixed anymore. Let's go on to our last piece of evidence. I'm tired from working. I want to watch the game. I will patch the leak later. Here, what are Mike's priorities? Resting, entertainment, watching the game? He doesn't have wise priorities. Instead, he wants to relax and enjoy entertainment rather than fix the priorities in his household. The very last section says that a few weeks later, a torrential rainstorm hit. The water poured through the roof and damaged the floor, but Mike didn't even seem to notice until the rains fell on his widescreen television. So that directly leads us to the theme that he wasn't handling the priorities in a timely manner and he caused issues. Let's look at another example. Kristen had a good reputation. She was known as a bright student who frequently made honor roll and did volunteer work in her community. Nikki and Simone had reputations too, but they were known for causing trouble, getting into fights, and behaving dishonestly. One day Kristen was walking to the little store on the corner to get some healthy snacks when she bumped into Nikki and Simone. Much to Kristen's surprise, Nikki and Simone were being really nice to her. How come we never hang out with Kristen? She cool, Simone said. Kristen had always quietly admired Nikki and Simone as girls who didn't take any stuff. So she enjoyed the compliments and the attention. Soon they were all walking into the little store together. The girls were playing around and having a good time while Kristen shopped. She picked out a few snacks and paid for her purchases. But on the way out of the store, the owner stopped them. Let me see what you've got there, little lady, he said as he reached into Nikki's pocket and pulled out several candy bars. Now you, he said, as he went into Simone's backpack and retrieved several bags of chips and packs of gum. He searched Kristen too, but didn't find anything. Kristen begged and pleaded with him as he called the police. Please, sir, I'm a good girl, to which the man replied. If you are such a good girl, then why are you hanging out with these two? Kristen did not know. Now, you're in 10th grade. Most of you have probably already met this dilemma once in your life. I want you to think about what the possible theme that we can learn from this. What did Kristen learn? I'm going to give you a few minutes and let you write down your answers. Okay, hopefully we all came to a similar conclusion. One possible theme, be careful of the company that you keep. Now, even though Kristen was a good girl, she chose to hang out with people who were not. There were consequences for that. Also, that it is better to be alone than in the wrong crowd. Kristen felt the pressure of joining their friendships because she didn't want to be alone. But is that really the wisest move? Let's look at the evidence that led us to this. One, very beginning, Kristen had a good reputation. We already know the author has set us up to understand that Kristen truly is a good girl. She has a good reputation. She's earned it. These other girls, Nikki and Simone, had reputations too, but they were known for causing trouble, getting into fights, and behaving dishonestly. Their reputations do not match. Here, Kristen is choosing to not really watch the company that she's keeping, which is what that first theme related to. It goes on and continues that much to Kristen's surprise, Nikki and Simone were being really nice to her. Kristen had always quietly admired Nikki and Simone as girls who didn't take any stuff. So she enjoyed the compliments and the attention. Soon they were all walking into the little store together. What theme does this relate us back to? The fact that Kristen, she chose to keep poor company rather than to be alone. 
that was not a wise move for her. And we know that because at the end here, her friends have been caught stealing. The man at the store, even though he knows that Kristen paid for her purchases, the text tells us that, she was still there with the police because the man says at the end, if you are such a good girl, then why are you hanging out with these two? You need to watch the company that you keep. I want a quick exit slip for y'all. Now that we have analyzed theme and practice identifying evidence that leads us to the theme, I want you to write a six word summary. I want you to provide your own definition of the term theme in six words. This is your little homework assignment. So when I see you next Tuesday, I want you to pull out this definition because we are going to go into short stories and analyze even larger text. I really enjoyed spending time with y'all today. Thank you for watching.